Well, welcome everybody to my eBrushing Hangout for the evening. We're going to get started, and I'm going to be doing some thread painting with my eBrush with some uh, sketches I do. So, real quickly, I'm going to prep my fabric. Let me see if I can undo my iron. I'm using a little Clover Mini iron just to quickly. Normally, I would go and I'd steam all this out, but there, this is relatively new. This is a uh, pillowcase. And I'm just going to hit it real quick. Got dust on it. Don't know why. But uh, just quickly before I do my sketches. These are really great, by the way. I have mine so it hangs up on my rack above me so that I have all my things available. It has a heat control here and it has an on-off switch. I'm going to turn it off right now. It's really great, too, for setting your um, inks quickly. You can turn it turn it on. In fact, I probably will leave it on so that I can hit my inks, but we'll, we'll get started with that after I get my sketch up. So let me get this thing clipped on. It's so funny. I clip it on. I have all these wires hanging down from my power supply, so I clip it on there. What I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be laying down some colors, and then I'm going to be going, which I won't do on, on the line with you because we're primarily looking at the e-brush, but I will post pictures of it when it's finished. I'll be starting an underpainting, and then I'm going to go over it with thread to uh, kind of pop it out a little bit. The nice thing about doing it on a pillowcase is I actually have this turned in edge so that I could uh, actually stuff the design behind and make it pop out like Trapunto. So I want you to know too that if you are going to draw on your fabric that there are a number of pins out there that you can get that uh, for example this is disappearing ink after a time it will disappear uh, the other one is mark be gone and again it will some of them work with water some of them don't some heat gets rid of it so that's what I'm going to do with uh, I'm going to draw my design on with that and you're going to see me let's see I don't know if this one's dry or not let's see that one's that one's no good. Sometimes I have good ones, sometimes I have bad ones. Uh -huh. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing some work with the uh, e-brush and some I'll be putting on by hand. And then these are little buds that I'll have on here. I'm just going to give myself a little paint, paint, paint up work. I'd be remiss. I think these are, are like a poppy. Ember. And don't be afraid. You know, it's just, it's just cloth. And this, by the way, will come out. And then this is going to open here. I'll have another petal here. And I'm not going to remember, for me, it's more about just doing value studies and things like that. My darker color will go in here. I'm going to try, let's see, I'll probably come up a little bit here. It's okay, these pins will go away, so I'm not really concerned about that. Then I'll probably do some green in here. And it's really funny because I'm going to hit it lightly with a fixative. You'll say a bit more pink. So I'll be actually doing some fixative on here. So the reason why I'm going to do a fixative is because I would like to have it uh, set so that it doesn't bleed as much. I'm going to bring it in a little bit further. Let's say bring it down some. There we go. So you see my basic drawing. I I will mask a lot with uh, my hands and with some tools, but primarily I'm going to try and do a lot of this freehand. Um, I will also have where's my scrap paper? Scrap paper out there. It's just gonna be a lot of fun. 
What I'm going to do real quickly though is I'm going to take my fixative. Now this is the same fix that you would use for uh, all kinds of stuff for pastels and things like that, which by the way I love pastel work. So just a little bit, just enough to see it makes it water resistant, but I just want to just a little bit so that it doesn't bleed as much. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to die from the smell first off, let's see. Excuse me while I open my lid on my things. I think we're going to use. Now, just to give myself a, an idea of where I want to go. And again, I told you that I am going to be using the marker in two different ways. I'll be doing some line sketches like that. Just to give me some basic ideas. And then let me get out my stencils real quick. Uh, I wish I had a lighter green. Let me take out my Sharpies. My Sharpies. Now, Sharpies, I have two types. I have the generic type, uh, excuse me, the, the regular type, the Sharpies, and I also have the uh, Dollar Tree version, which I enjoy those as well. So. Some Sharpies. We're going to work and, and blend some colors, I hope. Let me grab my stencils, which are running around somewhere. Stencils, stencils, where are you? I really do enjoy this very, very much. Remember what I'm telling you, it's a lot of practice, it's a lot of other stuff. Uh, this is a silicone pad that I'm going to put down. It's uh, for a, a hot glue gun, but I use it too for my iron just in case so that we don't have scorching like going on. Put my little iron there. On stencils, now you could go ahead and use the other stencils, but what I'm trying to find, I took them out the other day. Yes, it's one of those things where you say, did I take those out and use those over here or over there? Let me see. I have my shape stencils with me. Hmm. Okay, these are all my cut ones. Give me just a minute. I was working on a project, and, and I'll show you in a minute, but I had to go through a whole bunch of stencils to see what would work. Okay, so they're over on the side here. I know. Do, 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 do. I have bags and bags of these things. See, I have uh, several that are cut out, and I have a whole other bag of them here. I love stencils, and I love to do. I'm going to be doing some uh, of my own stencils, which I hope that you'll be interested in. I'll be sharing the files with you. I'll be actually doing stencils that have. Uh, these are just some of those those wonderful little free hand things that I use. I, I love to cut curves and things, and they really work well. But I'm going to be making some stencils that are going to be, they'll actually have a registration mark, so you'll know to lay those on top so that uh, it'll line up. So if I do a piece of fruit, I'm going to give you the actual stencil to do the background of the fruit. Then I'll do the seeds and so on. It'll, it'll all come up. It's going to be a lot of fun. It really will. By the way, um, and I should should actually take the name off of this, but just to give you an example, this is a company. I'm, I'm not recommending that we cheat, so I'll show you anyway, because I really I think their stuff is really pretty. But there's a company that does this fashion burlap, and with your e-brush and a stencil, you can do this. I mean, it's really neat. They have chevrons. They have... Uh, animal prints, they have solids, they have swirls, they have all kinds of stuff. Yes, you can see who it's by. But that's the wonderful thing. You can really do a lot of the designs on burlap too, which is really, really neat. I love working with things like that. So it's something for you to think about. You can use your machine not only to do your pillowcases, but to decorate burlap, ribbon, so many things you can do. And by the way, when you're doing ribbons, um, if you do have a cutting machine and you have some type of software that you can edit with, you can make the stencils. You can cut out your vinyl 
and you can make it so just like you would be doing say to do etching cream on a glass you can cut your, your stencil out, lay it on your fabric, uh, it's usually a very low tech uh, adhesive on there, and go ahead and spray, which is really, really cool, your, your uh, name perhaps on your ribbon or whatever, and you'll really have a good time with it. So it's just some ideas. Now back to our, our uh, work. Now, I got out my stencils, and, and as I told you, I'm going to use Sharpies and knockoffs on Sharpies. By the way, this is also another thing that you can do, and of course, I've uh, gone over it, but I took lace, sprayed the lace with a temporary hold adhesive, put it down and sprayed through it, and you can even see that it even has the fine lines of the tool that show through it. So this would be beautiful for a background, and I used one color here, but if you can imagine using a blend and really getting some beautiful colors working there. So, again, so much out there and so many things that we have available to us. It's just getting started, so I'm going to get started. Again, I have a lot of colors in my Spectrum Nord that I really, really love, but we're going to work, I think, today with Sharpies. I'm looking around to see if there's any other colors. Oh, I know. I've got a whole box of them over here, too. I love Sharpies. I wish I lived near a Staples when they had all those Sharpies on sale. Oh, I would have had boxes of them. Aha. And the reason why I'm going here now, again, I love my Spectrum Noir. They're my favorite go-to marker. But sometimes it's fun to play with other stuff, and we're going to play with some other stuff. And you see, this is one of my Sharpie packs. I love it. And the primary reason that I'm going here is because I want to use some of these very, very pale colors. And so, again, I'm going to be having some stencils where I'll have the flower totally designed for you. It'll have registration marks so that you can lay your next stencil above it and have some of the detail in it. And uh, just keep watching the blog or the uh, Facebook page, and I will share with you as soon as I have them up and designed right now. I've got about 9,000 million projects on the run, so it's going to be a little while. I'm working on some right now, but uh, just give me a little time. It takes a little bit of time to do registrations on things and all, so let's see what I've got going here. What I'll do first, I'm going to remove my logo so that you can... Oh, very nice, very nice. I'm going to put the chat window up. Let's see if I can pull chat up. In case anybody wants to ask any questions, uh, you can type in your group chat, and I'll try and go back and view it and see it. The first thing I'm going to do, and you'll notice that I have a really pretty light color. There's no spattering. Do you see how nice it is? One of the ways that I ensure there's no spattering is when I put the marker in, I test it until I get it in the right place. Sometimes you have to let the air blow on it to dry it out if it's splattery. I'm going to go over here, and it's, it is about masking, but it's about not being so caught up on it that you get crazy. So let's see what I can do. I really like to have a jagged edge there. But I'm just going to put some of these stencils down real quick in just a quick spot like that. See? For some reason, I am out of focus. Come on, focus, focus, domino. Let's look really close. Far away. It did it to me the other day. Why are you doing this? Let's see. Let me pull this up some. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Up. Down. Hold on a second. Let me pull up my software. I hope that you're enjoying this. I can't tell you, well, I can tell you that one of my favorite things is using my e-brush. I, I use it in a number of ways. Not only do I use it for fabric design, I'm actually doing some illustration work. I would love to get some more um, of my illustrations, again, cut into stencils, which I'm working on. I think you'll enjoy it. Come on. It's really funny. It wants to focus right here, and it's supposed to focus wherever I put it. It doesn't like me today. Aha, give me just a minute. I think my controls are coming up now. I'm old school. I'm used to having those controls where they're with your remote control. Let's see. Okay, come on, thing. I'm going to reset it. Give me just a minute. Reset. thought that would change the focus. Okay. Let's see. Settings. There we go. Yay! Okay. So, 
back to our machine again. You'll notice too that I turn my machine off. I don't let it run while I'm changing things. And one of the reasons that I do that is because just in case I just just have a fear, I don't want anything to go wrong, so I turn it off. It's like air, there's a lot of pressure, there's not really a relief valve here, so if I'm going to sit there for a while, I want to make sure that it's off. Back over here to my design again. I'm going to take this. I'll take this curve, just kind of get an idea. Remember, I'm not, there we go. And if I want something dark, I'll go to the edge. Look at that, see? We've got a real nice flower coming up there. You don't have to mask everything. I'm just masking it for overspray. And if I want it darker, I'm going to go down closer. Oh, I love this. I love this. It's not really, really nice. Uh, by the way, let's work a little bit on that stem with the e-brush. Now, I know that you're probably saying to yourself, how in the world is she going to do that? Well, again, it's all about using your, your e-brush. I think I'm going to go ahead with yellow on top of that. Let's see. Now, on this one, sometimes it does splatter, so I'm going to turn her up. No, very nice line there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this long curve. Now, I'm going to primarily aim for this and just catch the edge. Can you see I just caught the edge just very lightly? I'm just going to catch the edge. I don't want to turn it over though because if you turn it over you can actually run the risk of see so just really really tight. If I really wanted to go tighter with this let me turn down the air I would actually stop this I could go to a full size marker which would either be my Prismacolor or my Spectrum Noir use a little bitty, bitty bullet point and go in and do it but let's go back and finish these because I want to do my buds too now on the buds there's going to have some color on those it's just about layers and layers that's all just laying down those layers aha now this is one I want you to see this do you see you're going to come into ones that are like this now what I recommend to you is hold that trigger down and I want you to work with that pen. Move it back. Let's see if we've got it now. Look at that. Do you see how I've changed it? Do you see how I've changed it? That's the whole idea. Now look, let's get here and practice and we can actually go really tight on there. So let's see. Being chicken is something, huh? I'm usually not chicken. Let's see. There we go. Do you see my stem coming out? It's okay. It is really, really okay. About being tight. Just tight on here. There we go. Remember, it's about having fun, too. It really, really is. Now, let's go back and take our yellow. We're going to give it some depth uh, on these poppies. I'm going to hold it in tight. And that's why I told you in the beginning when we we're doing those practices, I wanted you to practice making dots, going down. Now you can see, look how much alcohol is in here. Do you see how it's putting down that color? As soon as it dries up, you won't see that dot anymore. But it was really important to me to tell you to go dot, 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 dot. Because it really is important when you're doing a freehand to be able to give yourself just a little dot and control it somewhat. Yes, you will have some overspray, but it's all about control. We, we really, hopefully you're enjoying this and you're getting a lot out of it. But uh, it's all about having fun. It really is. Okay. I'm going to see. Getting back to this. I will also share with you, as I said before, I think that it would be beautiful just like this, but I'm going to run some thread work in there. 
And let me invite. If you know anybody that would like to join us, please. I would love to have them. back to work again. Now I'm going to take, remember you can always go darker, you can't always go lighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spray this with the light color that we used before and then I'm going to show you a little bit about my shading technique. This is uh, again a lot of fun and in fact I love doing this on these practice sheets because when you do you can use them for other projects. Sometimes, let's see. Hello. Hello, Jan. How are you? If you find it's too much, bring it down. Now let's go back in here and we're going to go back to our fabric again. We're doing uh, pillowcases. I'm doing some poppies on pillowcases. I'm going to bring this in. Remember what I'm telling you. It's all about, aha, did you see how it speckled on me? That's because I turned it down some and I didn't adjust it for the turn down. See it speckling? Remember on Sharpie sometimes because they are so liquidy, sometimes you have to pull them back a little bit and get them, there we go, so they're not speckleting. Good. Speckleting. What a word. Speckleting. There we go. Now I'm going to leave the edges dark you're going to see me actually run this freehand here and remember if you want to avoid overspray aim into the work okay do you see how we have now our poppies coming together I'm going to go up here and I should have pinned this fabric remember I used a little fixative on it too it's only fabric just pull your, don't be scared just put it in there put it in there put it in there. So there's our blooms on now. Let's turn it off. We're going to go ahead and go back to our green now. So mint green. It's all about just enjoying this, having some fun with it, relaxing. And Jan, by the way, just to let you know, I'm going to go back after I finish this. Now I won't be doing this on the actual video but I will be going back and doing some thread painting on top and what I mean by thread painting is just some stitches to kind of help pull it together to define it a little bit but it can stand on its own it's going to be able to stand on its own but I think this picture really looks nice you know the whole thing about a, a design a good design can stand on its own no matter what the content is at least that's what I was always taught in school so And again, sometimes we kind of go wild a little bit, but that's all right. I'll put a leaf there. That's what I want. I actually should have had the pressure down a little bit, but I got excited seeing Jan. It's your fault, Jan. Look at that. Now, you see how, can you see how, look, I'm running it freehand, but look. See, I still have a nice control over it. Now, where it came out like this, you'd probably say, oh, no, it's ruined. It isn't. We're going to pretend that we have... I'm pulling it slow. Then we have another bud there. And we're going to pull this so that we have some petals coming out of the bottom. And again, since I'm going to work on it with thread, that'll cover it up. So don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> it's all about having fun with it. Remember, too, when you're changing pins, it's as simple as just hitting that switch and turning off your machine. I know, I know they don't say anything about doing that, but that's what I would recommend. Every time you change your pin, just do that. It's, it becomes habit with you. Now, uh, what I used to Jan to help fix this was just a very quick spray with a workable fixative. Not enough because it does make it waterproof. Of course, the, the alcohol eats through that, but enough so that it doesn't, you'll notice it doesn't really bleed on here. The only bleed you see is my overspray. But I think overspray lends itself to that watercolory look too. 
that so. little tip will help me a lot, Debbie, because I'm going to be doing some spraying on fabric tomorrow. Okay, I want to remind you, be before you get started, I want you to really do a lot of work, getting your hands loosened up, and I want you to do get you some cotton or whatever fabric you're using, and I want you just to sit there and really feel because there's a difference. I know when you when you go to the website for Craftwell, they tell you something like if you want to have a a really tight spray go higher, but I find the opposite, especially with Sharpies. The lower the spray and then the lower you go, you can usually control it better. Right. The higher it makes it more diffuse. I can't really control that that much. But it depends on the marker too. And remember, mm -hmm. there's there's something else too. I know this is crazy, but on our Spectrum Nor markers, which which I really enjoy using as well, but on these guys, you can and I have put that in it and used it and it really makes a very fine line so that when you're doing this fabric decoration but remember too it's about being an artisan and and really relaxing with your medium and it's not about staying in the lines I know like kids were always stay in the lines, stay in the lines, it's about having fun and, I, and I'm really thrilled hang on how's craft night going? really well <laughs> Now you see, see, it's still kind of got a, a it's still kind of a little bit. I'm gonna pull it back and see if I can just change it a little bit by me. And I think it's fun to be able to individually do this. You know, where you can go back and change it a little bit. Aha! Uh -huh, now see. Yeah. Don't be afraid too to sh to shock it to bring in those darks. I know right now it's like, oh no. But you can always, dark values are what makes it pop. I, I really should do some work in grayscale. I, I um, should show some of the work that I've previously done as well, I think. Because I, I think that people need to see that it's not, that it is a lot of fun. And that you've got, you've got to loosen up and you've got to shut your eyes and pretend you don't see color so much. And just have a fun time with it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to blend this by pulling a lighter color and just like you would do on paper, go in here and really saturate it so that it blends. Uh -huh. And don't be afraid. Are you using low speed? Um, this one I'm using medium on, but yes, I do. You see how it's blending the colors? Let's see. On low speed, it depends on the marker. Let's see. Right now, yeah, I've got control on. And if I want to go shoot the color back up, I'm going to go below it and push. Just like you would do with a blender. Right. But I do like the control it gives me to go back to, to really using a, a very low pressure. And that way, it's wonderful because I can work back and put my values in. Right. It's looking really pretty. See, it's just it's just relaxing, letting it go. This is a watercolor type thing. And I've seen your work, so I know that you are well capable of shining on, girl, because you do some beautiful stuff. <laughs> one of these days, I'll get brave. No, 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 you really do. That's one of the things, too. Pat yourself on the shoulder. It's about self-expression and having fun with it, not making mud, but the nice thing about alcohol markers is they usually don't mud up because they're so transparent. Right. And I love using, this is going to sound funny, but I love using those colors that do make dark colors. Uh, I don't like to use black. I like to use dark greens and dark purples and things like that to create my darks. Uh -huh. Now you see that I'm putting in some color that doesn't quite look like it's going to go there, but again, it's to give me some saturations into the dark colors. Right. It stands out more. And I think that it's kind of given me my little watercolor effect. Now what I may want to do, because I don't want to go wild with this, is I'll take one of these curved pieces. Let me take a tight curve. Now, you'll notice that I'm covering up most of the pink, but I'm not going to shoot on that. I'm going to try and shoot as close as I can, just to the edge of the thing, right. just to give it a line. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come and do it again here. 
I'm on the plastic. Now I'm going to come up just a little bit, and you'll see. See how it brings it home? It's just on the edge. Just on the edge, just to give me that little pop of color. It'll look really pretty with the thread over the top. I like it. Oh, it, uh, I hope it turns out as good as I'm envisioning it. No, it, it will. I have it, no doubt. If you want to go back and put some darkness to it and you don't want to really overdo, then by all means take out your, your stencils, go back in there and just kind of shoot on the edge. I love to use edges to work with. And just give it those darks and then you can continue on with that. Also, don't be hesitant. I know that we're using the e-brush and that's, that's one of the things about it. But don't feel bad about going back in there too and taking your marker and hitting in those areas. You know, to give it a little, it's all right to add to it. That It's all about adding to. Well, it adds a little bit more texture, too. Yeah, so don't be afraid to go back in there. Yes, you can do it all with that, but again, it's all about what you can add. And usually when I do that, I find that I go back and, and give it that little pop that it needed, and then I go back to the e-brush again and work with it. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to put some squigglies in there and get it... Get it going. Give it some beautiful areas so that it gives you that poof. And I mean, this, could you imagine doing a set of pillowcases for somebody for maybe a wedding present that, that are, it's just yours, nobody else's. <laughs> no, they'll, they'll sit there and say, wow, where did you come up with this? And you could say, I did it myself. So that's what I, I have a lot of fun with is just self-expression. And, and now I know that a lot of us are heading on to actually passing the crafting thing and calling ourselves more artisans in the fields that we pursue. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Life is, is full of fun. But you have to make that, as you know. So while I'm looking for the other collar that I have eaten, apparently. <laughs> oh, isn't it something? I put that thing down just for a minute thinking, I'll have that right there. And sure enough, I don't have it right here. Let's see if it's in my box. Please be the first one in the box. Nope, it's not the first one in the box. Let me see. I know what I'll use. Is that a prism of color? See, some of mine have have things on them and some of them do not. If you're a person that has, um, if you purchased your set from HSN or from Joann's or the new ones all have that beautiful little print on it that tells you what goes with what. But if you're like me and we're very fortunate enough to have one of the first ones that came out uh, for the testing, not all of yours have that. So. What? Not mine. Uh, the the prototypes that I used in the beginning don't have. They're just they're just plain. They don't have any lettering on them, so you have to look. There we go, my PC. The reason, the reason why I'm going to my Prismacolor right now is because I have several blenders uh, with a Prismacolor. And Prismacolor, again, is a really fun pen. You'll notice it's got the little tiny end on one side. We're going to use this giant nib. And again, really simple. You put on like this, push in, turn and lock. I love, you know, let me tell you, when you're using a Prismacolor, you get a lot of coverage. It's, it's got a big nib like that's that Spectrum Nora. I don't know why it's calling you again, but I'm going to try and get in on my other computer. Okay. So, uh, Wait, do I have to answer it? Probably. Okay. I'll see if I find you. Not available. So hang on a minute. I'm going to go into Google and see if it'll do. Okay. Do. See, don't be afraid to use a blender too on fabric. And I, there we go. Um, and if you want, you can go back and do a handheld version of it. Just go mm -hmm. back and, and do your blending. I like to really wet it up and then go back with this. And then 
It looks so watercolory. I love this. Okay, I'm going and I'll be back in a minute. Okay. And once you take a paper towel and wipe it off, look, all the color went away. This is my blender, and you'll see all the color is gone off the blender. So really, really a lot of fun. And the, spe the Spectrum Noir is really good, too. It also has a beautiful blender with it. So it's all about putting the things down. And you notice that I don't have much spread on it. There's not a lot of uh, bleed through. And again, I believe that's because not only did I put starch on it, but I put a little fixative to hold it so that it would stay in place. And so then we go back. And again, if you, if you do have your pens that are uh, these disappearing ink pens, you can go back and start and draw more of your design up. Get an idea of where you want to go with it. And as I was telling you, I'm primarily going to run stitch work over this. So this gives me the background that I need. I'm not going to cover it up, though. It's going to be very beautiful. It's going to come through with that. But that's the way that you watercolor on fabric. And these pillowcases, I oh, hope, are very nice. So I'll come back over here and let's see what my next one's going to be. Now, I do want to have some areas of green, so these are going to be my leaves. And I remember, too, that I'll have darker colors here. You don't. Ha it, it depends on where you are as far as your your comfort level. Just remember that if you want to have a shadow, when you look at your leaf, instead of thinking, I think people have a difficult time because when they see shadows on things, let me get a, a pen and show you. Find a pen, Deb. You got all these things here and you're not picking nothing up. When we talk about lines, that's why I like to go to those photo editing programs that you can convert things to six or, or eight colors. Because when you're looking at a leaf, and you're seeing all those blends, it can really get your eye. But if you really look at one, you'll see that it has maybe a darker color that comes out like this, and then a darker color over here. So I would go back on my base color and do very light, and then I would go back and add in the other colors. But until you get used to being able to break that up by eye, to give it that uh, look, Go to your photo editing program and lessen the amount of colors you have, and that'll help too. And again, don't be afraid to use other colors because it really pops it. And uh, when I'm prepping to do thread painting, a lot of times I don't have an underpainting, but with this, it's going to be really neat because I'll go in my stitches. I'll actually put this on a piece of stabilizer with adhesive so that I can run it under the machine and then I'm going to really come and give it a little bit more clarification with it. And I'll probably even do some back work background work with it. So it's all about just having fun with a piece really. And uh, again, just to kind of go back over this, this was a big company, Duct Tape, that had this brochure and it's all beautiful uh, burlaps. Think about putting a stencil with your machine. I love burlap. Hi Debbie. Hey Mitzi. <laughs> and you can see all the beautiful things that were created using burlap. And uh, Oh, I love that cheetah. Oh, well, see, most of this was, uh, as they say, screen printed on. They do it a different way now. But with your e-brush, you can do, you can buy yardage and do your own. I would actually use vinyl on a cutting machine, cut it out, and then stick it on my burlap. And uh, it should be repositionable for a few times. So, or use uh, template plastic. One of the things, and I, I'm going to share this with you guys too, and I, I think you all know this, but, but just to make sure, I know that Jan, I believe, uses uh, transparencies, correct, Jan? Yes. But at uh, not Dollar Tree, these are a dollar at Dollar Tree, these uh, index dividers, and you got eight of them. Over at, uh, what's the name of the place? One of the dollar stores, they had, you know, it was five of them, but you got five of them for 70 cents. So these can be really, you can cut them out on a cutting machine or use your die cuts in an embossing machine and then use repositionable quilting spray, basting spray, put it down on your fabric and it'll hold a tight edge on it too. So until you get used to doing an edge holding the stencil in your hand, it really is a good thing to have. And I cut so many of them out of that. But I'm, again, it's just something so the people that don't know, know. Okay, later. So, a lot of fun. Again, don't be afraid to go ahead and put your uh, blenders 
which really kind of push color. You can use those if you have a place that you want to blend a little bit. I actually will send mine through the machine because it wets it when it gets like this. And a lot of people say, but you ruin it. And you see how it's got the pink on it? Watch. This just amazes me. See any pink? No. It's my Houdini trick for the week. <laughs> I've been watching Houdini. That was it's very sad. But at any rate. So what do you think? Do you like this on the fabric? Yes, a lot. Maybe? Okay. And then we'll come on down, and it's it's just really simple. If you feel uncomfortable, then don't hesitate to use something like this, anything that's got these. This was actually one of those free downloads for Airbrush Flames. I also have one that I did on one of the sites that has more curves and angles. This is for flames, but I think that it works really well for doing stuff like this. But remember, too, that my stuff doesn't have the smooth edges, but I use it to go back and maybe do... Uh, a little bit of uh, let me find find my thing that's set up for this. I like to go back in there with a the little definition. Find a pen, there. Y'all throw stuff at me if I go wild. Now, if any of you are going to be in the San Francisco area, I will be there on the 13th at the uh, Brit Moran remake event. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'd be looking forward to seeing any of you that are going to be in San Francisco. I've never been I've never been before. Now you notice know see. Oh, by the way, when we were talking about doing, let me see, edges, and I told you just do the edge, you take your stencil. Now I'll even start it over here because all I want to do is just catch if you aim this way you don't have that much overspray too. Just the edge of the stencil like this. Now watch what happens. So I have a real nice defined line without a lot of paint on the other side. So that's what you can do too to add any kind of deep colors that you need. Hold it down. Don't be afraid. It's only paint. And see then you have that deep color that really pops back out at you. Oh, guys, what's going on? Are you cutting something? Sorry. Oh, that's okay. It just it sounded like you were sick or you were cutting. <laughs> almost cut. Almost cut. Uh, something. What kind of cutter are you using? I'm done. Do you have a caterpillar? Sounds like heavy phlegm. <laughs> I know it does, huh? Now, uh, also, Mitzi, you can go in and just practice for a little bit but going really tight and look you can do this see I'm really tight with it so it's just there's just a lot that we can do and we can really add to this and then again, I'll go back and retouch it. So, with the thread painting, I really feel like I could leave it like this and be happy and think it was a nice gift to give to somebody. So, mm -hmm. and it's something that I can write my name on it and say I did it. <laughs> <clears throat> and I think that all of us need to have that sense of uh, creation. I think is really the word creativity, creation, all those things. It is such a nice, wonderful feeling to have that. I would come down now, and remember, they're kind of like a bell. You're going to see the shape that comes here with the, the pink. I'll pull this here, and another here, and then I'd have it an open space like this where the other side of the bell comes. So just... Kind of play with it a little bit, and what I love about these the the uh, sets of sharpies, much like our Spectrum Nors, they they have many many uh, values colors that you can use. Let's see what I got here. I always go to that sheet though because if it does splatter, you want to be the one that controls it, not not it control you. So we're gonna go back now. What I might do because I see I don't want it. 
on the, the green to get right on the flower. So I'm just going to kind of mask it a little bit with this. I'm going to go down. I'm going to go ahead and draw in my leaf. You know, that's what you're asking about the strawberries. I actually just jump at it and do it just like this. Put, put my leaf in there. I'm going to go back. I just told you all to turn off the machine, and here I am doing it again. I'm going to go back to my sheet. This is, to me, this is the most important thing, is this thing. Now, you see how that splatter? There is no way that I'm going to use that. So what I'll do is I'm going to leave the trigger open. I'm going to pull down, push up. I may have to go and raise my air pressure a little bit. This one, I can see the liquid coming off of it. And until I feel comfortable with it, there we go. I wouldn't do it. So I'll come back over here like this on the right thing. I'm going to go back on my paper and go here. Cool. Now you see how my see how my leaf is starting to come out? Remember. Keep your whites. Work to your darks. Uh, that's one of the things that I learned a long time ago. You can always go darker, but you can't go lighter. So when you're doing this kind of stuff and it's transparent, remember, go ahead and work with that. Challenge yourself to work with it. Let's see. Now right here, I'm going to get in really close because I don't want this green to go all over. So I'm real tight in here. Now, can you see? See how it's kind of pulled it out some? Uh oh, did y'all lose me? Yeah. Nope. We're good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that mint green and I'm going to pull it a little bit through. I feel like it's so funny because y'all are like the cream of the crop with these things, and anything I do, I know you can, y'all can really kick butt with it. Don't be scared. Just get in there. <laughs> Sometimes when you hear me say that, it's more that I'm talking to myself. It's like, oh, don't do it. Just get really close to it. Really See how I'm getting really down in there and close? That concentrates my spray, but look how it popped out. See how it's bringing the leaf out? That's the whole idea. You want to get in really close. You don't have much overspray when you do that. I hear a little bitty, I hear a little special person over there going. <laughs> see, so really, you do yourself, hey baby, good to see you. So don't be scared, just get in there, and I know that y'all aren't scared, but so many people, they get these, they're just kind of really frightened, I think, in the beginning. So, hey baby. Hi, Miss Jan. Hello, how are you? Good. Oh, I'm so glad. See, we can pull in with our stems. We can go back and just give it a little accent here. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs> I say don't let the bug bugs bite, but I think nowadays they'd freak out with that. He was dying to talk to both of you. He's over there whispering in my ear, and that's what you were hearing—the little, little oh, chattering oh, on the side. So sweet. It really is. Good night. See, just don't be afraid to get in there and just put some color on it. <laughs> and move on. Oh, so, I didn't. And again, I think that you'll see because a lot of people are afraid of fabric when they use it that it's going to bleed through a lot. Mm -hmm. And you notice in my edges, it, there was a little bit, but it's more like a watercolory effect. 
And uh, just to show you, the other side didn't bleed through that bad. Now this is a, a pillowcase, so it is double, but I'm really pleased with that. It tells me too that I'm not using a lot of ink. To go back and set it, what I would do is I'm going to turn this on. If you do have a, a hand, you can use that. <laughs> but I have these wonderful little, this is one of my favorite tools, this is my clover iron. And so I can actually go back and ink set, keep my inks and set them right here. Do you put something over over it or you just apply your iron and right on top? I'm, I'm doing it on top. Yes, usually if I'm doing silk or whatever, I use a pressing cloth. But mm -hmm. I'm using cotton right now. And to be honest with you, it's more probably to protect the iron than it is the thing. But uh, for this demonstration, no, I'm just going to use this. But yes, you would use a pressing cloth. Okay. It's just to set it. If you don't, if you want to use just a thin piece of cotton on top, you can use that too. Now, I'll tell you something else that really is a lot of fun. If you have crayons, do your design and where you want to have resist, like, like they do batiks, mm -hmm. you can actually draw with the crayons. Go ahead and do that and then um, spray over it and then take paper and you iron it and it pulls the ink, the, uh, the wax, wax off. Yes, and you will be surprised at your wax resist. This thing does get really hot, but it sets the ink for me, and that's what I like. So, Deb, did you put something in between the layers? Of the <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I missed it. I just asked that, yeah. No, no, no. She, no. One of you asked about a pressing cloth. The other one asked about layers. That's two different things. So y'all are right. We just a second. We pin this thing back up and turn it off, so I don't burn up. Okay, now if I was going to do multiple layers, well, if this was, I always, this is my favorite thing to use, and let's hope the post office doesn't see me and come after me. I get these big boxes from the post office. I only have two, so if they want, they can come get me. These are those prior, priority mail post boxes. They're about, I think they're 11 by 17. They're, they're a large size, yeah. and I find that they fold in, and they're really, really nice. So usually what I do is I pin my work on those and use those. Okay. And um, if I was going to do something like a t-shirt, I'd have to have this in between. Sometimes I'll put freezer paper in between because I know freezer paper has the plastic on it. Mm -hmm. But with this, I'm not worried about it because I don't really think anybody's going to turn over. But even at that, this is folded over, and look, that's all the bleed I got. Not bad. So, And since I'm going to be doing thread work on it anyway, it's going to come through, so I'm hoping it won't show. Another thing that I like about doing these pillowcases is, and I don't know if, if you were able to join me in the beginning, but once I put in my, if I just wanted to do like an outline on the, say, the petals here, I could go in and I have a device that's made for Trapunto that looks like a big, oh, I don't see it anywhere, it's a big needle that goes in and you put yarn in it so you can stuff all this out so that it puffs out. So I right. can actually go back and do this and then bring my work up and, and have it padded, so to speak. Do my leaves and all, which I think would be quite beautiful. I'm working right now on things that I hope um, I can show pretty well at the quilt market. There's so much to do, and there's so many different aspects, and I don't always get to finish projects. I, this is so funny. I sound like I, I love watching Nancy's, Nancy Zeman. She's one of my role models and she says I live my life in samples and when you demo all the time that's what you do mm -hmm. you uh, basically I finish a third of what I do because I have to show somebody else a new technique so right. it depends on the season and, and then of course we all have lives I will tell you that I did find that this was one of the hardest things I'm going to show you the, the piece that I showed you last night now this is just a, a quickie thing of it. It's on pearlized paper mm -hmm. and you see how it's sprayed. What I had to do was take them like this, turn them backwards, pin the things back, put a thing over it and spray them. So that when they popped out this way, mm. but it really, when you got it down, this pearlized paper, you could see the, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it shines right with a marker. So I was really pleased. And then I've got this new stencil that I'm going to be doing work with silk with, and I love this. I, I went and put all the yellows and purples and just moved the stencil a little bit, and I think I'm going to use that on some silk. So I think I might even lay down and just shoot through the butterflies with it and see how that looks. 
we have such a wonderful time with all the stuff that we have. And um, right now, for me, especially over the next week, I'm, I'm really challenging myself to bring this beyond. Now, to me, whatever venue you call it, whether it be crafting or um, art or whatever, yes, we are all true artisans. We're, we're really creating our own thing, but um, there, there's a group of mark of people that are DIYers, and uh, I think that it's going to be very interesting because when I go to this market in San Francisco, I think they're a little bit different than a lot of us. I don't know, but we'll find out. So it's gonna be fun. Well, let us know. Shoot some video while you're there. Well, I will. Uh, I hear that it's going to be. Uh, they're expecting. There's seven million people there, and they're expecting wow. fifty thousand. They're expecting fifty thousand on the day that I demo. Wow. So it's going to be fun, but I just I want to make sure that I touch all the aspects so that they know that it can be used to, to actually manufacture and create items that you want to have fun with. By the way, Mitzi and Jan, just as a little side note, you know how you have the hack for using the, the uh, foam things. Mm -hmm. I have a hack for something to keep them in. Awesome. What? <laughs> Do you know what this is? That looks like a gum container. A Tic Tac, Tic -tac. container. <laughs> That's the jumbo size Tic Tac containers. Yeah, and you can do this, and guess what? You can get your little things out that way. But what I really like is I like this because you press here, like this, and you open <laughs> it up. Thing up. <laughs> but it's this. It's amazing. Look how nicely made this little container. The container's worth more than the gum is. I love this container. It just there's all kinds of things that I like about. <laughs> well, I have I have a little box with all the little ones, the little the regular size um, yes. Tic Tac containers, and it holds all my different colored pom poms. Well, I love these. I, I I would like to do a display where I just have the bottoms up, so they look like uh, snow globes. Mm -hmm. So cool. I wish I could think of something to do with this because I love this thing. I do crazy stuff though, like that. I just I fell in love with this. I said I can't wait to show them my little belted tea pack. And <laughs> it's things. cute. Yeah. Oh, I have. I wish these would fit. They're just really, really big though. Yeah. These. This is that Faber Castile. These are all uh, that beautiful, beautiful waterproof Indian ink, and there's so many different colors. And I love that. We need to get them to make a universal adapter that will hold the larger markers. Well, we would love to do that, but I'm going to tell you that um, as the thing happened, there happened, there were so many people that actually have patents that they haven't been able to find one that doesn't have a patent on it. I know. So that's the hard part. I mean, we talked about all kinds of ways, but I think that one of the things... <laughs> again is to maybe come up with ideas on your own how you can do these things if you're lucky enough to have a 3d printer <laughs> no. and and have a little CAD idea you could probably do your own or if you had amazing uh, mold putty you could mold out the bottom part and then come up with the top part I don't know I'm, I'm working on some ideas for myself so you know that I share stuff as soon as I come up with something, but I hope that you found this interesting tonight. And just remember that we're and and you know this because I know you guys. I've seen your caliber of work and I've seen so much. But once you get the machine and you really kind of lend yourself over to it, you're going to be amazed at what you can do with it. It's not just about doing shadows and scrapbooks. You can actually produce. All kinds of neat stuff. I've actually used it on glass. Now, when you use it on glass, no, you can't cook. That's one thing that I've heard people say. Oh, if you bake the sh the stuff that you use the sharpie with, if you if you bake that in the oven, it's going to work. It doesn't. There's one that does. It is the stain. Mm -hmm. The sharpie stain. Now the, it'll stay, but it still it doesn't oil, go. Oil based is it? No, yeah, these oil based. Are not there's a same. sharpie. There's a sharpie that that is oil based, and when you bake it at 250, I think for about 20 to 30 minutes, it stays. Yeah, but it's still going to float on top of the glass. 
see this, the stain, these are for fabric. This won't work on that, but I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the ones, they actually have glass markers, but still, what people get, what they don't understand is when you're doing glass, and I used to do glass, the, the kiln opens up the glaze and allows the paint to go through. On these, it, it's, it's going to be there, but it doesn't go through the glaze. It's going to sit on top of the glaze. But yes, you're right. It is permanent, and there's a lot of glass paints. So I'm really kind of keeping my fingers crossed that the future brings us some really cool stuff. And I know it will. Now, I know, too, Mitzi mm -hmm. and Dan, that y'all, you did ask about the strawberries. Yes. See, they're all my favorite thing. And basically, that's all I did, just what we just did. I just shot that and then went back and and hit it. Now, I used a fine point marker to do that. See how it's got the little lines? Mm -hmm. I got it really, really close and had fun with it. And that's what it's about. It's just about having fun. And I'll show you now the difference between this was just some, some really quick work. This is one of my parrots done with. A red. You can tell I wasn't. I, I mean, I was outside. I was playing, having fun. But that's just a really quickie parrot. And then this. Oh, and my butterfly. Now with a real airbrush, you see, you can. I mean, you can really get. This isn't even really good, but you can get a lot more detail with it. So it's a little bit different. It's there's less puff out on the the uh, airbrush versus this. But I like this. I think it looks really cool too. Uh mm huh. -hmm. So. It's all about just practice and practice and practice. <sighs> and coming up with something. I love all of your projects. Y'all are doing so great. And I can't wait ooh, until they announce who's on the design team. I wonder who could be. It's going to be such a big surprise to have it out and find out who they picked. I can't wait. Should be fun and an exciting moment. Yeah, I just think those people are going to be working away for six months. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't go anywhere, but thank you for joining me. If you have any questions about uh, working on fabric or anything that, that you can help me with, don't hesitate to, to send me an email and give me a thumbs up and join me again next week for another. Well, next week I will be, no, we won't have one next week unless I can convince one of my friends to do one because I'll be flying my way to San Francisco. So, um, but I will join you the following week. So, bye for now. See you later.